Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 54 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist facing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that if you want to hire people with cloud specific skills such as those who understand cloud architecture or security, here are Dave's top two secrets. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. I guess I'm giving away my fake secrets again, huh? Okay. Your naughty, naughty cloud secrets. Okay, well, yeah. you know, open question then, Dave, is will gimmicks, in your opinion, win the day? I, I, I don't think so. I think they're kind of a good PR move. Um, I remember um, when I went to a, a, a big enterprise software provider years ago, um, their chief competitors in the space had basically hired a fleet of RVs with their brand name on the side of the uh, RVs. And they said, we're doing interviews today and they had doors open and had recruiters sitting at desks uh, that people could see through the window. And they were, um, you know, in essence, getting people out of line at the conference and, you know, giving them uh, coffee and bagels and things like that and actually doing a live interview right there in front of their place. I thought that was... Uh, very unique, very gimmicky, but you know it basically got them more PR uh, cred than it did actually probably real candidates that were they could you know convert into employees. But you know these sort of things are coming. People think creatively and innovatively. If there's a talent shortage, and recruiters are you know typically the uh, the innovators there. It's online, you know, going to job boards, things like that doesn't seem to be where people are going anymore. It seems to be still a you know kind of a one on one relationship and the ability to leverage social networking is the ability to find people and all these things are there and those are really becoming kind of the bread and butter for how recruiters are operating. You can probably provide more information than I can. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is about interacting with human beings, this is about figuring out where they exist, this is about getting to them, um, because they're typically not gonna reach out to you. If they're happy with their jobs, if they're you know, okay with what they're doing and not looking for a new position, you know, they need to be networked with versus, you know, just uh, having gimmicks, which, you know, I think are basically maven, you know, cause some negative reaction in the marketplace and make you look a little too desperate. 100% agree with that. Uh, you know, everyone loves a gimmick up until a certain point, but when you start gimmicking a, a lifestyle choice or such a major decision, such as a, a career change or, a, you know, a new focus or something, in my opinion, you're cheapening the, the whole process of uh, not only the quality you're, you're, you're going in with and, and how you're sort of leveling your own brand and how you want to deal with people, but just like you say, the, the, the conception from the, the user's point of view of, of a gimmick, you know, I think that's not, it hasn't got that, that longevity and it certainly doesn't, um, it's very difficult to run the same gimmick over and over again or think of gimmicks every time you've got a new campaign. Uh, there's got to be key drivers for that and I think you, you you, you've hit the nail on the head actually when you said about it's, you're working with people you know, and the best thing we can do is make sure that everyone's on, on that playing field of being people with each other and not a role of recruiter and candidate. You know, we're people you know, fulfilling roles that we've you know, taken our choices in life to fulfil and we need to help and, and use equally one another's skills to work off each other to fulfil the overall game which is for you know, the recruiter to make money and have a job and for the, the candidate to be happy in a, in a, in a work, you know, and to make that work is, is being people together. So much confusion around the technologies we're dealing with. We need to pay more attention on and listen more to what someone wants and equally what they can do. And not only from a, a recruiter and a candidate point of view, but equally from a recruiter and a client point of view, such as the hiring manager. You know, we need to be able to listen and ask the right questions to get the right information from the right person so we can relay that information back on to a potential candidate that know the type of job they're stepping into. Not, not something that is, you know, we're, we're, being, we're being told one thing by the client just to get the talent. And then when the talent's in, it's not actually what was promised. So it looks bad on us because we've, not, we've relayed a, something that's incorrect only because we've been fed the wrong information. I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's sort of almost stripping back away from job boards, Let's, let's interact, let's build that respect, let's build that trust uh, and make sure that people um, feel they're part of, we're, we're all a part of this journey together in life as people. I think you, you hit the nail on the head when you said that. Yeah, absolutely. It just becomes a kind of a uh, person to person you know, kind of interaction. If I'm going to trust somebody to be my next employer, 
uh, they have to have a rapport with me, and that rapport typically has to go beyond some of the technological uh, gimmicky things that are going on today. And it would it would be you know kind of nice to have uh, um, you know someone come after me, but I'm always looking at um, you know why are they doing that? Are they desperate for people? Is there a big turnover there? And and uh, that has to be kind of um, you know brought up up front. And I think that uh, it, the ability to kind of interact with a human being and meet them you know, in a casual environment and something that um, you can actually assess their skill sets, you know, is a much more valuable thing to do than, um, you know, the typical interview process they have today, which I think is kind of dysfunctional. It really is. It really is. And I think, again, you know, I think every recruiter has that holistic kind of feel. We just deal with people. And I see this message on social media is we're people to people and we, we only want to work with this and work with that. But really, sometimes that's just a smoke screen to get that engagement. Because what, what, what's happening behind that in middle management is they're heavily laden with KPIs and there's a lot of pressure to deliver. So it, it really is on that, it's more about that churn of figures uh, from a recruitment company point of view than actually really having that consistency of working with people. Um, I think it's, it's something that I've come across a lot is that people, certainly when I've been recruiting recruiters, uh, is, is you find that these people are very people orientated, people orientated, but really when you scratch the surface, they look at that as just a way of, of getting that engagement to, to find candidates that want to believe they're people orientated, but really they're, they're pressurized by their KPIs. And, and if it doesn't work out with one candidate, they just drop it. You know, they're like, oh, move on. You know, it's, there isn't that kind of longevity of building relationships. And I think that's, that's a bit sad, really. But, you know, I think that's just, um, that's just how some recruitment companies work. And I just, but, but I do think that the, the, the true gold within recruitment are the people that are building those long-term relationships that are, you know, still nurturing those relationships because people are happy to work or refer a good recruitment company or a good recruiter if they know they're going to nurture a relationship for the long term. Absolutely. I think that's, that's, uh, uh, that's absolutely the way people should kind of think about how they're going to build their talent. I mean, there's probably nothing more important in your organization than the building the people that are going to take your organization to the next level. And we have a tendency to neglect it in terms of understanding the process and quality that people need to go through and how we find the right people. And the expectations are set in their mind as to what the company is requiring for them. And also the company understands what, the, what they need to provide the employee. It's not just salary, but uh, innovation, uh, the ability to provide them with a, um, uh, an environment that allows them to thrive, uh, you know, live the kind of lifestyle they want to live, you know, so they're not, uh, you know, having to run, you know, sitting in traffic four hours a day. They're, you know, working at home sometimes or working, you know, working in different places. And, and it just uh, needs to be a symbiotic relationship, you know, where the old, you know, Theory X, you know, kind of folks, you know, basically are going the way of the dodo and we still have a few out there and that's absolutely not the way to hire AT folks. No, it truly is. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, some people even want to work in the cloud. So I think if they don't want to, uh, if they don't want to do the traveling or work from home, they could always work in the cloud. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the great things about, uh, you know, the internet and cloud computing in general is it doesn't really matter where you are and there's virtual teams. I've run virtual teams for the last you know, 10 years of my career, I don't care where they are, uh, just care what they're doing and, you know, make sure they're getting things done on time. But this ubiqu ubiquitous access to all these resources that they need, you know, not only from my standpoint, my, you know, team when building technology, but, you know, someone who are building a product or a service, you know, things like that allows you to take things to the next level. I, I truly believe that, you know, people shouldn't be required to go into a central place every day uh, that's just kind of soul killing at the end of the day. If you have to be, if you're forced to go someplace you may not want to be, um, you know, versus you working in an environment that you may be more productive in. Um, you know, people always talk about, well, you know, how do I know they're working? Well, the reality is people are, you know, looking at output, you know, as a means of, you know, what's going on, how creative are they You're able to add value to the organization uh, versus somebody who's just occupying a seat, you know, for eight hours a day. And I think we're, we're our philosophy is changing. We're becoming a bit more open uh, in the terms of how we're building these work environments. I know offices are going away and cubicles are going away and now we have these op open environments where you know, people can you know, sit where they want and if they need to do a meeting, they have access to a meeting. If they want to work outside the office for you know, a couple of days or a couple of weeks, it's perfectly fine. I think that's the way things are going. I think the large organizations are adopting it right now and they're realizing that people that really kind of value those kinds of relationships 
those kind of working relationships are going to be, you know, have more longevity at the company, be more creative, more inspirational. Um, so it's kind of proven itself as a, as a viable mo- model. So. Yeah, it really is. It moves us on nicely to your top three tips, actually, Dave, if you'd uh, be good enough to share. Yeah, let's do the secrets first. I mean, first thing is, um, you know, the things I recommend in the article would be number one, meetups, you know, which happen in most major cities. So look at meetup.com and, you know, make sure you're showing up. The The best recruiters I found are the ones that are uh, more stealthy um, and then go to every meetup in there and not necessarily to advertly sell or basically, but make sure people are aware they're a recruiter and that people can approach them if they want to basically look for other, uh, you know, other jobs and, you know, that they may be qualified for. And finally, um, you know, publish something, uh, you know, the ability to kind of like do this video, this uh, you know, video uh, cast we're doing as well as the podcast, things like that, you know, publish a blog, things like that. Make sure you understand that people understand you know about what your technology is and you're committed to, you know, spending a couple of um, hours a week and, you know, putting together some content that will um, allow people and guide people in the space, you know, even if it's just, you um, you know, your experiences, you know, being a recruiter, you know, your ability, you know, uh, recruiter's guide to understanding cloud computing or things that are, you know, going to be interesting to people in the field and that make them feel that you're spending time and it's figuring out what the technology does. The other thing would be why gimmicks are good PR. They mentioned this during the talk. They typically don't meet hiring requirements. That's I, I uh, found that all the gimmicky stuff has a tendency to produce resumes and interests that typically are people we can't process into employees. So you're still in with the the traditional things of networking, you know, getting refer- referrals and things like that that actually leads to the more um, the more better employee hits out there. Partner with a good rep- recruiter that understands the cloud computing space. Most don't. Um, one of the things that drives me nuts uh, when I used to get recruited over the years for different executive positions is they, you know, would always you know re- have, have a rudimentary understanding of cloud computing but had no idea to answer any of the questions I had as to what technology is being leveraged, what they're building, things like what techno- you know, things like that. I have to go to the company to figure that out. And by that time I'm wasting, you know, more time and energy than I needed to waste to figure out it wasn't a place I wanted to go. And then keep an eye on the metrics. And in other words, the hiring metrics, the way in which you score, the uh, number of contacts you make, the number of contacts you're able to turn into viable leads, the number of leads you're able to turn into viable recruits, the number of recruits you're able to turn into viable hires. Uh, those are always telling to me when people kind of show me who's coming in the door, who's reaching out to us, a resume, who we're reaching out to, and then adjust your uh, hiring practices based on those metrics. You know, we're getting the five best employees were, you know, hired in through recommendations and you know from existing employees. So we'll focus more on that. The five worst were, you know, uh, unsolicited resumes that came in, you know, via the website. So let's not spend as much time on that. Um, those sorts of things are very, you know, very helpful and you kind of adjusting the way in which you're, you're going to the resources. I find that people aren't making the links between a failed, uh, a failed hire, uh, mishire, uh, and then where those mishires came from. And they end up doing more of the work, uh, more that's not working versus what the, what is working. Great top tips there, Dave. And, you know, we've, we've covered these uh, in a number of different ways, but I think that's, uh, you've hit the nail on the head with those three and your, your top Top two secrets worth their weight in gold, aren't they? They really are. Um, <laughs> thanks for being part of the uh, training show this week. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure, Dave. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. Uh, remember, Dave is on Twitter, so at David Limpicum. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on all forms of social media, pretty much. So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, obviously. Uh, check us out there. Come and be part of the tribe. And uh, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share uh, these uh, videos and channel with your friends and colleagues in cloud computing and all that sort of stuff, cyber security, because uh, it's great to have that uh, support from you guys and girls. It really is. And uh, we're on iTunes and Stitcher as well as podcasts, so you can check us out below the link to those as well. So you can check us out on your uh, on your handheld devices, which is cool. Uh, and we've got lots of blogs and there's a link below in the description box for those as well so check those out and look forward to next week